I know what you're thinking, this guy's probably crazy. <laughs> but this was my first title. Let's be honest, it's not really funny, I'm sorry. I decided not to use it, so please disregard this slide. But how to build a desert compound, uh, impenetrable by the federal government. You're thinking this guy has lots of guns, he's crazy, but actually, I hope that you'll see me instead of as a militant, more as a hippie, because we all know hippies aren't scary and they're not dangerous. So why would you build a desert compound? Well, first of all, no HOAs. That's pretty self-explanatory. Second of all, you're gonna have some privacy out in the desert. Most people don't really want to live in the desert, so it's kind of a safe place to go to get away from the city. Um, the third reason is, it's actually more financially viable to live off of the land than it is to um, try to exist in an urban environment where you can't create for yourself. And then fourth, I wanted to spend more time with my family, so um, that was the main reason. Who do you bring? You're gonna need to bring some people with you because you can't do it alone. You wanna have a community. First of all, I bring Corey and I bring Jamry. They're married. Corey's a doctor, that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't feel like I need to explain that one. And Jeremy is a great mediator, he's great with people. Um, you'll never feel bad when you're around a guy like Jeremy, he's awesome. I'd also bring a guy uh, named Keith. He can pretty much build anything, he can do anything. <laughs> he's, about, he's about half your size and he can beat you up. And um, if you're stuck on a desert island, he's your guy. You're also gonna wanna take a guy like Paul. He's a philosopher, he's a songwriter, he's a, an intellectual and um, Great guy to have around. You're gonna need somebody like Casey. She's gonna be able to uh, help you grow your food and she's a girl that's not afraid to get her hands dirty in the dirt a little bit. And you're gonna need somebody like Angela who's very spunky, spontaneous, fun to be around and she's gonna make you look fashionable with her recycled clothing. And then of course, somebody like Jen who can actually educate your group. You can give her anything, she can synthesize it, process it and give it back to you in a very tangible and real form. And then at the end of the day, you're gonna need some people with muscles. Pretty easy stuff. So. What are we talking about here? We're talking about earth-friendly living, um, or biotexture. It was developed by an architect named Michael Reynolds, whose uh, license actually was revoked because he's so hardcore. Um, he lives in Taos, New Mexico. <laughs> but what we're gonna do, we have to capture water. We're gonna use the roof of this house. It's gonna, it's gonna flow the water into a cistern, 10,000 gallon cistern. We're gonna gather the rainwater. We're gonna use it later. Um, and it, we're gonna use pumps to filter that water into a system so you can drink it, so that you can bathe and wash with it, and that's the first use. Then you're gonna be able to take that water that goes down the drain, put it into your plants, which will actually later will produce your food, but you're gonna be able to water those plants. From there, it actually gets filtered through that soil into a third use in the toilet, and then eventually it gets put out into a containment system, a uh, black water system, that uh, allows you to actually disperse it back into the water table later on. Next, you're gonna need some electricity. You're gonna get that from the wind, you're gonna get it from the sun, and uh, the sun is gonna gather that electricity into some batteries. I know, hilarious, right? Um, <laughs> into these batteries. The batteries will then um, go into an inverter because you have to have direct current converted into an alternating current for you to use with your normal 120 volt appliances. Now we don't need a lot of electricity because we don't need heating, we don't need cooling from electricity. What we're actually gonna use is the earth. It's pretty unbelievable. Four feet below the crust, the temperature of the earth is 58 degrees all year round. I don't care if you're in Anchorage, Alaska, if you're in Tucson, Arizona, 58 degrees below the uh, earth crust. So we're gonna build our house down just a little bit so we can have some thermal stability. And then we're gonna create some thermal mass with things like recycled tires, dirt, and lots of sledgehammers because you have to pound and compact this dirt so it's so dense and so ready to gather that sunlight that comes in during the day. We're gonna build it out of wine, bottles, beer cans, tires obviously, and um, the wine and the beer uh, vessels actually will hold air, which becomes a great insulator, which allows the thermal mass not to leave the space that it's in. And then finally, you're gonna need to eat. So in the desert, it's hard to grow food, but we're gonna have some indoor greenhouses where we're climate controlled, we're using that water again um, to produce that food, and we're gonna be able to create things like chicken, eggs, fruit, vegetables, even fish. You don't have to be a vegan to live in the desert. It's gonna be awesome, so if you guys wanna come and live in the desert with me, Give me a call. See ya.